Good afternoon. It is Thursday, 1.30 in the afternoon. We are doing a presentation today on Chapter 15, Speaking to Inform, which is the speech that you're giving next week. So by now, ideally, you have a topic selected. You have an, a basic idea of a central purpose. You may have even gotten to the point of your beginning to outline or at least researching the information necessary for your topic. When looking at speeches for inform information and organization, Chapter 15 is most instructive. And this is, again, a skill. This is something you do with practice. So as you work through the chapter and as you look at your topics, you can decide immediately which topics are for informative purposes and which topics are persuasive. A informative topic can be a persuasive, persuasive topic, specifically an action steps. You have to do something as required. So when you're at pages 278 and following, we talk about speeches about objects, speeches about processes, and speeches about events and the types of organizational skills that are involved. Speeches about concepts as well. The reason why they require different strategies is because they are the descriptions of different things. That is to say, if you're going to talk about building something, you may want to go through chronological order. If you want to talk about how a dam is built and how it does its job and what functions a dam has, you may need spatial organization to talk about the base, the spillway, the, the powerhouses, all of the gates and things that go into a dam, for example. So understanding the very different parts of your topic and what you want to do will drive you to a specific organizational methodology. Whether you'll be talking chronologically, like today's speech, I want to talk about the Battle on the Little Bighorn, or I want to talk about the shot heard round the world, Lexington Concord, the opening of our American Revolution, 1775. Or, if you wanted to talk about a contemporary topic, such as what's happening with the Veterans Administration, or what's happening with, with student loans, things that, uh, that happen around us can be explained, and people can be informed, and people can be made aware of the size of a problem. So, the guidelines on this, and I'm bringing the book up to it so I can keep them in front of me and I don't look all around the room. Guidelines for informative speaking include don't overestimate what the audience knows. And that is not designed to be critical of your audience or of students in general. The fact is, is if many of you are focused upper division students that have been working very hard on your degrees. And because of that, you may not have spent a lot of time focusing on items around the world while you've been doing this job of being a college student or if you have a daytime job. Demands on our time are much higher and much more um, diffuse and from multi-directional than they were for our parents. My dad never had a cell phone. My mom refuses to have a cell phone. But to form a, you know, a point of how people's knowledges are all different. Hmm. Let me think about this one for a minute. I, oh, I have a good example. All of you probably, in an, if you live in an apartment, have a cell phone bill and you have a cable TV or other bill for internet access, unless you're truly gifted and you have free Wi-Fi that you're pirating your stuff off of. My mom does not own a computer. My mom is 80. She does not own a cell phone. She has a simple landline phone. Her phone bill is $32 a month. Her phone bill 10 years ago was $30 a month. CenturyLink, her telephone provider, hates my mother. Why? My mother doesn't have voicemail. My mother doesn't have caller ID. My mother doesn't have any of that. My mother finds old phones with old digital recording, and my, I had to retire her tape-driven uh, message answering machine phone when I had to explain to her that they didn't make the tapes anymore, that I'd have to go to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. and steal one from their collection. That's how old her phones were. My mom still has a beige 11-pound rotary, rotary dial phone that she uses in her bedroom. It's the best phone ever, I've ever seen. When I have stayed at my mom's house and I had access to dial-up service, 
I used to routinely use dial-up service, and her copper, her phone line was so clean that I nearly had DSL speed. It was like 80 uh, kps per second. DSLs in the 120s, and normal normal telephone line the modems were in the 56k, and it was faster than normal because there was no degradation of signal with all these other things that people put on their phones, like voicemail, like caller ID, or if you have Comcast, like an alarm system. So my mom, however, knows a lot about the world because she reads newspapers and she watches news and she thinks about the world and she calls her relatives in Ireland, England, and France. My mom may not be totally digital, but she's one smart little old lady. So you should think about that when you look at your audience. You have an audience of six, five students, including yourself and me, all of us with different experiences and opportunities. So take the time to explain what you're talking about. You have five to ten minutes. Take the time you need. And trust me, there's, that's, that's not as much time as you think. So tell us everything, then start to edit down. Relate the subject directly to the audience. Yes, it's informative, but the most way to keep our attention is to explain to us why the topic is important. Obesity? I Look at me. I'm fat. There's bunches of us, and there's more of them, and there's lots of children. So a topic that is ubiquitous that everyone sees. Student loans? Specific to your audience. Looking at other topics that are involved, how they affect students, how they affect the community, how they affect your life, and the li and how your life could be, we could have your life if we're careful or not careful. Technicalities. Talking about don't not being too technical. The biggest problem we all have in this line of work that we're in, both in teaching and in being a student, are acronyms. Acronyms we get used to. FAF, financial aid form. 1040, the U.S. tax form, return form for individuals, U.S. form 1040. So if you have to, tell us and explain it. So if you have an acronym, get rid of it. And that way you can continue. It's too easy to slip into slang. We don't work in your world. So if you want us to be part of it, you'll have to bring us along and give us a program. Avoid abstractions. Joseph Conrad, the novelist, is quoted in the textbook, My task is before all to make you see. And we all know people who do this every day in television and news. Regardless of where you sit with Jon Stewart, Stephen Colbert, and others, you still face the whole idea that I have to explain it to you, I have to explain it to you in terms that you can embrace and understand, and will keep your attention. They use humor. And, you know, the appropriateness of their language. I can't put their clips up on the university server. It's just too much curse words. Even if it's bleeped out, understanding and the, the appropriateness and, the abstract, and keeping the examples concrete and vivid help the audience understand. Along the, along the um, margins of the textbook, at least in mine, I'm sure in yours too, are various concepts that you should remember. And from your legacy charts from English composition, the same terms and principles apply. We talk about comparison and contrast, how you would put two items together and how they don't work together. If you're going to personalize, how you're going to make it applicable to not just you and your story, but how your story affects us. Being creative. Avoiding abstractions, you personalize the ideas, you adapt to the audience knowledge about the topic, you'll be creative in how you get us there. On page 294, you have the sample speech of medical robots. Go through that. It tells you with uh, how it originally detailed extended example, another example, relating the topic to the audience, then to the first point. But and another good experiment for you to work on is to take one of these examples and read them out loud as if you were giving it as a, as a speech for manuscript. For one thing, you can figure out the word count and you can figure out the time. For another, you can practice. The last thing I want to talk about is practicing. Take your time. You can record the speech and play it back. Get used to that. I think online, digital, 
presentations such as this are the future, not just of school, but of work. Currently, my conference calls are all telephone conference calls. We rarely have a Skype opportunity, but I do believe Skype and other visual interactive media, such as the one that we're using for this class, are going to become the norm. So thinking about that, making sure that you can give a presentation, you can be clear, concise, and you can wrap it all together is very, very important. So thank you very much for your time today. If you have questions on topics, please feel free to email me or ask me questions. If you ever want to do a group Skype, co Skype conference, we can arrange one. And um, I've been tempted to ask if you would like to do that. We have not done it yet this quarter. We are halfway through. So next week we'll present the informative speeches, and then we'll get ready for the persuasion speeches. And then very quickly this class will be over. So we have a quiz, and we have two speeches, and that's it. Everything else is your evaluation of other people's speeches. And uh, filling out you know, evaluation forms, marking them up, and sending them back to people. The best process for that is to use the assignment modules and click on the instructions for uploading a file. Upload your file, and that should take care of it. Um, I'm notified email automatically from the system when people post up assignments. So please go ahead and continue your hard work. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask for help because I will be happy to help you. Have a good week and a great weekend. I'll hear from you soon. Bye-bye.